This is one that I've been wanting to do for a while and it's a bit more of a theoretical kind of physics kind of angle to guitar playing. Because of my kind of background and acoustics and stuff, it's uh, easy for me to pull that. And for those that are a bit more interested in the way the guitar sounds and why it just sounds the way it does, I thought I'd do one of these videos. So I wanted to go through how do guitar strings produce their sound. This is an easy one. Vibrations and acoustics cause a guitar string to produce their sound. If you're sensible, you'll take this sentence and call this topic of how do guitar strings produce their sound as understood. However, if you want to know more on this interesting topic, listen in kids. This information isn't just applicable to guitars, it applies to all stringed instruments. Note that I'm not going to go into all the little details about this topic as it's too much for this video, but I'll give you enough information to give you a better understanding and whet your appetite to read more into how guitar strings produce their sound. Let's talk basics. When a guitar is not being played, it obviously doesn't make any sound, well most of the time. Let's think about how you make a guitar create sound in the first place. Well, you either pluck or strum the strings, right? But first, let's talk about this in terms of energy transfer to help you understand how do guitar strings produce their sound. When a guitar is played, there is an energy transfer from you to the instrument, starting with the kinetic energy from your arm, fingers, and this kinetic energy is transferred into the string when it is plucked or struck. The kinetic energy is produced due to the action of striking or plucking the string, so displacing the string from its rest position, so that, and releasing it. As the string is under tension and secured at both ends, here and here, an oscillation occurs with the string moving back and forth past the rest position, so this kind of motion. The string then vibrates and now we have the first building block for the string to produce sound. The motion of this string then interacts with the air around the string and turns the kinetic vibrational energy into acoustic energy or sound. Let's go into that a little deeper. You've probably heard that there isn't any sound in space and this is true, well not sound that humans can actually hear. This is because there isn't much stuff for it to transfer the energy through. So vibrational energy in a moving string, or any vibrating source for that matter, to be heard or considered as sound, there has to be a medium for it to transfer to and propagate through. When we play the guitar, assuming you're not in space here, although that would be fun, this medium is the particles in the air. We also get an energy transfer through the vibration of the guitar. It's less relevant to the topic of how guitar strings produce their sound, the vibrational movement of the string causes local air pressure changes to occur, which is more commonly known as sound intensity or pressure. This sound intensity or pressure then propagates and changes through the air as what we know as sound, and eventually reaching our ears. However, this level of sound from the strings alone is very small, especially on an electric guitar. Just think about an unplugged electric guitar. It's the rest of the instrument that helps amplify the signal, either electrically through the pickups or acoustically through the body or sound hole. Let's talk about pitch now. The pitch of a vibration string is essentially determined by the tension or stiffness, the mass, i.e. the weight of it, and the length of the string. And it is related to something called the natural frequency, often referred to as the fundamental frequency or just the fundamental. The physical relationship is based on a mass spring system for a resonant kind of oscillation. The vibration of a guitar string involves a standing wave concept, as both ends of the string are clamped by the nut and the bridge, changing the way it behaves. The phenomenon of standing waves also causes other frequencies to be produced, called harmonics, or harmonic series, which relate to the fundamental resonant frequency. Now I hear you scream, what the hell is a standing wave? It's not you just waving while standing up, oh no my friend. The term standing wave refers to a wave that isn't really moving in a direction, so it isn't propagating along the string. Imagine when you've got a sound wave, you're shouting to your friend, shouting across the room, that's the sound wave moving. It hasn't really got that effect, what we're talking about here. This comes from the two moving waves interfering and causing the wave peaks not to move and causes a strange standing wave pattern. The first possible instance of a standing wave is called the fundamental or first harmonic. The fundamental standing wave is apparent when there are two ends of the string clamped down and unab unable to move. The fundamental standing wave is apparent when the system is excited at its natural frequency. 
The natural frequency in Hertz is the frequency that the string wants to vibrate at. You can easily see this happening with your guitar when there is an external sound that excites the guitar string, such as a bass guitar. If a bass guitar note of A is struck near a guitar, you will find that the unattended guitar's A string will start to ring like crazy and vibrate. This is because an external acoustic force is exciting the string and its resonant frequency. It loves it. This diagram shows the string vibrating at its natural standing wave frequency at a snapshot in time. The string will go up and down, back and forth if you like, depending on how you look at it and how it's been struck, but the centre point will always be where the maximum movement or displacement occurs. This is called the antinode. The points where the strings are clamped are called nodes. This state of the string shows the half wavelength. I really hope you're getting some good info on this video. Please let me know your favourite bit in the comments and why. If you're new here, then it would be great if you subscribe and click the bell to get notifications of new videos. Let's get on with the pitch now. So how does this relate to pitch? The length of the guitar string determines the fundamental standing wave and relates to the natural frequency of the string. This is easy to understand if you consider the instance of a sine wave. Remember back to school, the kind of thing that does this? If we take one full cycle of a sine wave, we can then compare this to the standing wave pattern. You can see that the standing wave pattern on this diagram is half a full wavelength, i.e. one oscillation. We can then determine the natural frequency of the string vibration using this equation, which describes the relationship between mass, tension and the string length of a standing wave. Pitch is directly related to the frequency of sound being the descriptor for the way that humans determine and hear the different frequencies of sound. There are other higher frequency resonances that occur in the guitar string which relate to the fundamental frequency typically by a whole number. These are weaker in amplitude compared to the fundamental but help to add the rich, more complex sonic properties to a resonating guitar string. These are called harmonic frequencies. The harmonic frequency number relates to the number of half wavelengths in the string's vibration. This diagram shows the third harmonic as there are three half wavelengths in the string vibration pattern. You can see this easily if you have a recording set up at home. Just record a guitar string being played and then listen back with a frequency analyzer on the channel and you will see the fundamental note F1 and harmonics F2, F3, etc. This diagram shows this for the A note with the fundamental at 110 hertz first harmonic at 220 Hz, third harmonic at 330 Hz. You can see it happening there. Let's talk damping now. Have you ever noticed that when you strike a chord on a guitar, it doesn't ring out forever? Some guitars have a pretty good sustain, but eventually the sound from the guitar strings will stop, they'll just die away. It's also obviously due to the vibrational energy lost as sound. It's also because there is an element of damping applied to the guitar strings through the various restrictive parts of the instrument, including bridge connection, the nut, guitar neck, the body, and basically anything coupled to the string in some way, including the air around it. You just need to think of damping in terms of something that converts the kinetic energy of the active string to another form of energy, mainly vibration and acoustic energy, but also an element of heat too. We've been through the physical elements that cause a guitar string to make acoustic energy or sound However, let's just briefly go through how an electric guitar generates sound from the vibrating strings. The way an electric guitar produces sound is completely different from the way an acoustic one does. Forget about electroacoustic for now. You've probably guessed that the pickups have something to do with this. And you'd be right. It's obvious from the name, if you think about it, pickup equals pickup the sound. These wonderful things called pickups are basically metal poles placed in a magnet with a wire coil wrapped around them so why do you think that is? Is the pickup just like a microphone that picks up the sound from the guitar strings? First, let's look at what a microphone is. You may be familiar with a condenser or dynamic microphone in that it directly picks up the fluctuations in the air by moving the diaphragm in the microphone capsule. This being the nearest tool we have for picking up changes in acoustic energy directly. The acoustic energy from the moving of the diaphragm is converted into a voltage detected by your mixing desk or preamp and then transferred back to acoustic energy by the loudspeaker from your guitar amp. A microphone is a transducer which converts energy from one form to another, i.e. electrical potential to acoustic energy. 
A microphone can be used to pick up sound from many sources of different amplitude, but an electric guitar is a very quiet instrument. Quieter than a voice. If you're a performer, you'll know that using a microphone to amplify a quiet instrument is a nightmare in a live performance environment and can produce feedback issues very easily. If guitar pickups were microphones, then we would have so many issues with them, they would likely pick up all the sound sources with higher levels than the guitar, which wouldn't make sense in a live band scenario. Guitar pickups generate sound in a completely different way to the microphone. The strings sit in a magnetic field produced by the pickup and it is the movement of the strings within the field that cause fluctuations in voltage. These voltage fluctuations are then sent to the amplifier via guitar lead or cable. The voltage is then converted by an amplifier and loudspeaker into acoustic energy, which you then hear. This is a far more efficient way of getting a better signal to noise ratio from the guitar string movement. So what about an electroacoustic guitar? These can use up to three mechanisms to generate the sound from the guitar strings. These are a magnetic pickup, a piezoelectric pickup, or a microphone type system. The microphone is mainly used to get sound generated from within the sound hole, to give that extra realism that is expected from a natural acoustic guitar sound. The under saddle piezoelectric pickups are very common, but typically give a very unnatural guitar sound. There have been some difficult concepts to grasp here, but just watch the video a few times and take notes if you need to. Don't forget to comment below and let me know why you wanted to watch this video in the first place, because it's quite a, a different type of video for a guitar lesson. Likes are really helpful in getting my content to others, so if you can, please like and share where you can. I hope you can subscribe and tune into my channel regularly for gear demos, guitar lessons and industry interviews. See you next time, guys.